on your Jump, 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 jump. What we don't start it. Look at what we don't start it. This the people party. What's up, party people? This is Talib Kweli, the BKMC, the MCEO. Welcome to another fantastic edition of the People's Party. I am the host of the People's Party. I got my lovely co-host, Jasmine Lee. Everybody give it up for Jasmine Lee in the place to be. Oh, that's what I'm talking about, baby. <laughs> How you feeling, Jasmine? I'm feeling great. Got my entourage in the back. It's not your entourage. It's all right. I'm borrowing them for the day. <laughs> now, you spent a lot of time in Atlanta, right? Yes, I love it. My second home. Today's guest... Atlanta is also technically his second home. He's a very special guest. Some people will, people who know what's up, say he's responsible and an architect for the modern Atlanta hip hop sound, especially the trap sound. He incorporated influences from the Bay, from the church. He's chopping it up all with the Southern sound and making a, you know, a great mix. He's heavily involved in the careers of artists that we know and love, like Gucci Man, OJ the Juice Man, Lil Uzi Vert, the Migos. He's worked with everyone from JT the Bigger Figure to Usher. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the People's Party, Xavier Dotson, aka. Zay hey. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's up, my guy? That's what I was looking doing, for. Bro? Thank you, thank you for coming. Yes, through. sir. ATL in the house. Uh, yeah, ATL by the way of the bay. By the way of the bay. <laughs> so yeah, we had uh, too short here recently, mm -hmm. and uh, he was giving us a lot of Bay Area game okay. and knowledge. Um, how you feeling though? First of all, feeling good, man. Feeling real good. Okay, good yeah. to see you. Yes. Sir. Um, tell us how you got from the bay to Atlanta. Um, well, the same way I got to the Bay, my dad was in the, in the army. He's a mm -hmm. military, you know, military guy. So I'm, I'm what you consider a, a army brat. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I was born in Germany. I've just been moving my whole life. Okay. So we get um, a lot of army brats on this show. Yeah. Yes, it yeah. says something about that. There's something to that with artists yeah. coming from that the army background. Yeah. Or, or lack of. <laughs> <laughs> so keep going. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I moved to the Bay. I spent all mm -hmm. my high school years in the bay area so that's when i say i'm from the bay is is because that's where i you know i got my game from that's why mm -hmm. i really made my name in doing music so mm -hmm. i say i'm from the bay and then you know my parents moved put moved from the bay to atlanta my dad mm -hmm. retired said you know it's too too expensive to live out here in san francisco yes sir okay. so moved moved to atlanta mm -hmm. so you know i stayed in the bay for a couple of years after they moved then i was like i can't afford to stay in the bay Mm. Really, you know, I'm I'm buying studio equipment. I'm trying to live out here, but it's too expensive. You need ten jobs. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if it's still like this now, but at one point it was the most expensive city I think to live in now. in the world, uh, <laughs> partly because of Silicon Valley. Yeah, so, um, uh, oh, yeah. I thought it was because of Full House. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so uh, so I moved to the I moved to Atlanta, man. I, took, I bought studio equipment. I was putting studio equipment on Layaway while I was in the Bay Area, mm. and then mm. when I got it, I shipped it down to my parents' house because I know you know they had room for me. In the basement and i can set up my little studio there so that's how i got to atlanta okay mm -hmm. um now your career started if i'm not mistaken when you met jt the bigger figure jt the bigger figure in the bay area yep. shout out to jt tell mm -hmm. us about that uh jt the bigger figure was a guy that was you know he was making independent moves in the mm -hmm. bay already i'm a young guy i'm a church musician i played an organ at church uh, at the school, I play in the band. I was mm -hmm. just, you know, making up music, playing at the band. So at the football games, I would bring my keyboard and get the drummer, and we would just play songs that you would hear on the radio, you know, just mm -hmm. to have the crowd jamming at the football games. Mm -hmm. JT came to the one of the games and said, hey, man, I need to get you in the studio. You mm -hmm. dope. Mm -hmm. Took me in the studio, showed me how to work the equipment, and I was just in his house all the time just, you know, making beats. Mm -hmm. And it went from that to me being making songs for his album right. and the Bay Area, you know, artist album. And, you know, I started getting my feet wet. Now, you've worked with E-40, Be Legit, mm -hmm. San Quinn, Messy yeah. Marv. Yeah. Is there anybody from the Bay that you haven't gotten in the lab with yet that you want to? I mean, that was that era back then. To me, back when I was working with Messy Marv, mm -hmm. San Quinn, Be Legit, E-40, them was the top dogs to work with. Mm -hmm. Too Short, you know, mm -hmm. do some work with Too Short. So it's like, who else... You know, who else right. you going to work with? Right. You know, went you know to the mean? top. I went to the top. You know right. what I mean? So I don't really know. Now I can't really name, you know, the Bay Area artists, you know, that right. I didn't work with. So uh, First of all, shout out to your entourage because I'm getting secondhand contact up here. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> uh, it smells good. Uh, I, was, I was thinking that I was like, somebody smoking in the office. Right. It's not the office. It's right here it's with right us. It's right here. Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, the Bay and Atlanta mm. seem to be very connected in hip hop. Do you mm. think that's because they're both like, the second cities to their coast, like, you know, 
um, the Bay is second LA, Atlanta second NYC. I didn't even think about it like that, but yeah, I mean that could be the reason why. I you know what the the Bay Area and Atlanta just remind me so much of each other, just because they got their own personal style and mm-hmm. you know it's something about the bay it's like if you from the bay you proud of the bay because you do you do you do you do stuff different in the bay than you do anywhere mm-hmm. else right like bay, the bay in la is two two totally different places the Absolutely. bay is more culture yeah it's Atlanta's like more, more culture, culture yeah that's like, it's, it's like they just remind me of each other like mm-hmm. if, all the way down to the way they dress the way they mm-hmm. talk they lingo it's like you know they similar so yeah short spoke about that you know when he moved to atlanta mm-hmm. i feel like him i feel like short moving i feel like it was already like that yeah. But when Short moved to Atlanta and when he linked up with Lil John, mm-hmm. and then because Lil John was doing the crunk sound and he mixed it with like Blow the Whistle was yeah. like mm-hmm. that record what Short said was Lil John was trying to do a two short record. Mm-hmm. But he from the A. From the A, yeah. So he couldn't he couldn't not do an A record. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I think that something about that Lil John two short connection connects the Bay and Atlanta. And Atlanta. It definitely in a real does. way. It definitely does. Um you were born in Frankfurt, Germany. Mm-hmm. Um then you moved to the Bay. Um how does that shape your feeling on the current anti-immigrant sentiment that's not just sweeping the nation, mm-hmm. but sweeping the entire world? I mean, I, I just came back from Europe mm-hmm. and wherever you go, whatever whatever country, there's like a, a right wing nationalist mm-hmm. fervor that's mm-hmm. taken over these countries. Mm-hmm. As someone who's not born here, do you notice it and does it affect your life? It doesn't really affect me now, mm-hmm. but I, I know it's, it's it's a real scary thing. I'm almost scared to travel overseas a lot of times now. I just had mm-hmm. to be picking and choosing which shows I'm gonna do, <laughs> you know, overseas because right. it just you know it's 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 that type of thing where it's like, man, I don't want to be somewhere where I'm stuck mm-hmm. and I can't right. get back to <laughs> get back to the right. house. It's so happened to and Slick Rick, yeah, it's Savage. like it's too much going on. And so. they um because they, they were also trying to change it so that if you are an, um born an army. Brand, and mm-hmm. you were born outside of the country they're trying to say that you can't get you're not a, an american citizen like you're not going to automatically get your citizenship mm-hmm. so for you who was born in germany is that like something that you know you would want to fight out about or you speak out on or well you, i think i was in germany maybe three months oh. mm-hmm. you know what i mean i don't know it's just nothing. a place of birth it's just a place you of have birth. no connection I, n- none yeah. whatsoever so you play a lot of different instruments uh not really, not really? i mean i I play the keyboard. I, you know, okay. I play the keyboard organ at church. Play the drums. Well, then you, playing the you drums. nice on them keys because the yeah. way you play them keys made me feel like you could play a lot of things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like piano players, um, are the best sort of songwriters. Mm-hmm. I don't. I'm, I'm a lyricist. I don't know how to write music like that. Mm-hmm. But I, is it true that you kind of have to know the piano to really be an ill songwriter? Uh, I'm. I, I can't really say that, mm-hmm. but I know it's, it's it's definitely helped me. You know, be who I am. Mm-hmm. Like me, just playing the the keys mm-hmm. has is you know taking me to where I'm at now. I remember like when I, when I was growing up in church, it's like I started off playing the drums, then I wanted to play the guitar. Mm-hmm. But the guy that played the keys is the main guy. If you don't have yeah. a drum, if you don't have nothing else, as long as you got somebody that can play them key, you know, the keyboard yeah. or the organ, then the service can go on. So. You know that's why I really took to the uh, the keys, and it's, it's you know it didn't made it it didn't made my job so easy being a producer, mm. cause I can I can automatically just make up music you know without even thinking about it. Do you feel like some of your church influences is shown in your uh, music that you make today? I feel like my music still is church music, I even agree. though it's ghetto trap. Right. Rap music, it still got a heartbeat, it got a soul to it, it got a sound to it mm-hmm. that you can, you know, you can feel it in the music. I still feel, I feel it in the music that I produce, and it don't matter if somebody talking about robbing on the song. Mm-hmm. You can listen to the music and feel like it's something about it that just, you know, touched me in a certain place. I got feel like, <laughs> well, we talk about all the time. Trap music is definitely inspirational. Yeah, if, if you listen to the words, it's telling you to get up and get it, yeah, get up yeah, and conquer yeah, the day, yeah. get that bag. That's yeah. all like, you know, inspirational music. What exactly. I like about your beats on the inspirational tip mm-hmm. is that. The artists that you do, you do whole projects. You don't just do, make one track for somebody. Yeah. If you do a pro, doing something with Boosie, you're doing a whole Boosie yes, project. Sir. Doing something with Lecrae, you're doing a whole Lecrae project. Yeah. And these artists feel incredibly comfortable mm-hmm. on your beats mm-hmm. to the point where, like, they like you have records with with Future. That's mm-hmm. really some just straight up church shit. Yeah, it is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like Lecrae do a whole damn church album. Yeah, with Zaytoven. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Like yeah. even Boosie, Boosie done seen a lot and been through a lot. Mm-hmm. But when I listen to Boosie on your beats. Mm-hmm. He Boosie always raps in a way where he's he's developed it as an artist where he raps to 
the community, mm-hmm. about the community, community yeah. and to the to the youth. Like yeah. Boosie did that, so you don't got to do it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But yeah. on your beats, it's like he's really preaching. Like, don't he got he a song called Church, Church on, on Mondays? Yeah, right? yeah Church so on Mondays. As I'm speaking, I, the song is popping <laughs> in my head. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, so I, that's what my job at church, my job is to create an atmosphere so somebody can preach or give a word or testify about something. Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm still doing the same thing when I'm making, you know, making rap music. Right. Making the platform where you can, you know, vent or or testify or preach to somebody. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now coming right. from the church, um, and I, I heard that your pops was hard on you mm. because he didn't really like hip hop. Mm. And I heard in an interview that you said your pops even said for you to still get a job while you were successful yeah. in hip hop. Yeah. Um, now you're being very successful. I mean, you're mm-hmm. the architect of an entire sound. Mm-hmm. You know, um, have you? Ha- what's your relationship with your pops like through music at this point? My dad is my best friend, mm-hmm. almost in the whole world That's right beautiful, now. It's right. like me and my pops hang out with each other. We go to the gym. We go to the movies. Like uh-huh. we talk all day, every day. That's beautiful, bro. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and it was. He admitted he was just like. You know, it was just a, a spot where he didn't understand. And I was the same way. You know, mm-hmm. we grew up in church. My dad's a preacher. My mom's a choir director. Mm-hmm. Oh, they wow. worked every day. You know, right. I see them get up and go to work every day. So right. if I see it every day, I'm going to look at myself like, I need to get up and go to work. Mm-hmm. And Pops was just reinstilling that into me. Like, okay, you trying to do music, but you need to get out and make a job. You need to make, you know, you got to make some money. Yeah. Yeah. Um, You and me have a similar experience like that. Mm-hmm. My parents are educators mm-hmm. and I, I dropped out of college freshman year mm. i had already i dropped out for like six months but then they was paying for the dorm mm. so I, I was like i gotta tell them yeah i was, oh living, in the dorm. <laughs> I was living in the dorm you know what i'm saying yeah. me and john forte shout out to john forte mm. and um i took him to an italian restaurant mm. sat in it but what i did was i was smart with it what i did was i went and got a job at Incura First, books at yeah. a bookstore. Okay, okay i got a job and i got an apartment right i got a job and apartment and i sat them down and told them i was like listen um I'm not going to go to college no more. I'm going to do this music thing. Mm-hmm. And they they educators, so they was upset. But they said, look, you know, as long as you got a job, mm-hmm. like, nothing we could That's say. Exactly. And they didn't understand hip hop. I remember my parents at that point was like, are you sure? How could you have a career in hip hop? Like, mm-hmm. that's not really a thing. Thank like, you. is there a sh- like, you know, on the gangster album, I, I think it's, it's maybe a Sinbad that they, they got on there who's mm-hmm. saying, who would have thought that you have rappers get to old age? Like rappers be like, how you like me now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but we didn't we didn't picture that. Yeah. We didn't we didn't see the longevity too short long, retiring yeah, yeah, or Jay Z yeah, getting to, yeah. to 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 his status or mm-hmm. Diddy getting we didn't mm-hmm. we didn't see this. Mm-hmm. Chuck D is in his sixties. Yeah. yeah. And he's on the road with 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 Prophets of Rage right now. Yeah. So yeah. my parents was like they didn't understand it, but through my success, mm-hmm. they got to understand Stand it. it. Yeah. Do you feel like that's the same thing? That's the same exact way. Mm-hmm. I remember I would, you know, I was using my parents' house to make beats and record. Like, mm-hmm. I will bring Gucci. People that they look at, like, who you bringing in this house? To? What y'all <laughs> doing? Like, what's going on? Like, right. no, this ain't this ain't the place to do that. Right. Uh, it, it it took my parents seeing that, and then I remember my first song was so icy. That's mm-hmm. two thousand and four, mm-hmm. and it blew up and it's been on the radio. And I got paid twenty five thousand mm-hmm. dollars. They paid me twenty five thousand dollars cash, you know, for the beat. Right. Now my parents, my mom or my dad. Never seen that much money at one That's time right. ever in their life. Mm-hmm. When I got that money, I remember bringing it home in a bag, and I said, wow. I, I had them mm-hmm. help me count it and gave both of them five thousand dollars a piece. That's when. That's when they understood. It went, they, that's when my dad went from <laughs> like this ain't no studio to hey, do y'all need some snacks? Yeah, y'all need some snacks downstairs. Need some what you need? Yeah, come so, downstairs with the tray. Yeah, so. it's crazy because parents they always wait like they're always like. I don't know. Yeah. And then as you get successful, like, all right, I was with it from the beginning. You but go, I understand it, though. Yeah. I understand because I'm a parent. I'm mm-hmm. a dad. And that's mm-hmm. like, I do that to my son. You know, if he into video games, he into a lot of that stuff. And I'm like, hey, get off of that. You ain't, you going to have to find you a career, what you want to do when you get older. But now people are making Money millions of dollars off of doing that. Games. So I can't just discourage him yeah. from, you know, want to be technical or, or things of that nature. So it's like, yeah, your parents raised you better than they knew they did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. like by you understanding that you could go get this bag doing this hip hop, mm. you were imp- uh, um, using implementing values that they gave to yeah, you yeah. they just didn't see it yet yeah. until you put that money on the table they're like oh because in yeah. their mind he was going to use the values differently they didn't know the way he was going to yeah. maneuver yeah. With yeah. yeah to be fair to them a lot of us didn't like mm-hmm. you know we, we're a lot of this hip-hop lifestyle we we are creating this yeah we're creating this idea that young black people from these neighborhoods could be independent businessmen yeah. on um, their own through like it's never happened before yeah. 
Yeah. Our parents, they didn't have it. They us. had it. They yeah, had to they go had to college it. and get exactly. job security. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, speaking of which, you have a skill um, of cutting hair. Mm-hmm. Um, we had IDK. You familiar with IDK? I don't know IDK. All right, he's in Atlanta. He's from uh, uh, Prince George County. Yes, mm-hmm. PG County. Shout out. Right. Okay. Um, he's a very exciting young artist. He he comes up under the wing of um, Denzel Curry and them. Okay. Um, but he got a great album out. Okay. Um, and we interviewed him. But he talked about how he got arrested when he was a teenager. And when he went to jail... Um, he didn't have to join a gang or didn't have to fight because he knew how to cut hair. Mm. And it got me to thinking, you know, how important barbers have been in the community, um, particularly in marginalized communities where we need hubs to uh, come together and gather and commune and, and talk mm-hmm. like the barbershop from from what it represented back in the days to what it represents now. Mm-hmm. And the skills that it represents, the fact that you can just like an artist be an independent businessman. Mm-hmm. You don't have to, you don't you can't go to barber school. You don't have to. Mm-hmm. Um, can you do you feel like this, that skill has helped you? Man, that skill has been a, a very big part of my success. Mm-hmm. First of all, me being a barber uh, came about from the guy that was cutting my hair. Mm-hmm. I remember a guy named, his name was Gilbert. Uh, That's when I was living in San Diego. And he used to be fly all the time. You know, he got all the girls. He mm-hmm. used to dress nice. And he used to cut my hair and it made me want to be like him. Mm-hmm. So I was like, man, I want to cut hair. Even though the cutting hair ain't had nothing to do with it. It's just right, right. <laughs> But that's what you associate yeah, with. Yeah, like, I can't do like, now. They see, yeah, they like, see man, the baby on TV and like be like, I want to be like him. Yeah, I want to be like him. <laughs> yeah. So I started cutting my little brother hair. I mean, mm-hmm. tearing him off the bone. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was the worst haircut you ever want to see. Put the bowl on his head. Yeah, oh, it's like, you know, but it turned into something I, I mm-hmm. love to do. Then I started cutting all the kids, you know, my friend's hair from school. I started turning into a hustle. That's how I was making my money, cutting hair. The whole basketball team, everybody coming to get a haircut from Zay. So, you know, it was just a skill that developed uh it helped me develop my social skills like you're saying mm-hmm. ha- having conversations with people learning about people you know what i mean so i went to when i moved to atlanta i went to the hair schools and got my license i said this is something that i do legit. yeah i had right. to make it legit right. you know this is something i've been doing this i've been making this i've been making my money let me at least go get my license for mm-hmm. it and that's how i met gucci man that's how i oh, met wow. a lot of people that's how i met a lot of people right people know me from haircuts in atlanta before they knew me about for making beats but you were cool, so they trust you. Yeah, it's beats. like, come on. I don't remember the name of the shop, but I used to go to a shop downtown back in the day in Atlanta. Whenever I, I would wait till I got to Atlanta to get a cut because the barbers in that shop was so ill. I don't know if that shop's still there. Man, I couldn't leave the barbershop. I had I had Usher Paper's number one song, and I was still cutting here in the barbershop. <laughs> People <laughs> couldn't leave. leave. <laughs> Man, I used to be a barber for a day. Uh, <laughs> my my little brother got in trouble because he was being rude to my parents so they wouldn't take him to the barbershop mm. and I was like oh I got you I got you had about three bald spots oh in yeah there. I didn't know it <laughs> I didn't know it um, <laughs> you fuck with Killer Mike Barbershop yeah I just me and Usher went there at, when we me and Usher did our album together we went and uh, kicked it over at at Killer Mike Barbershop, got haircuts, had mm-hmm. media come out there. They was filming, taking right. pictures. Oh, well. Shout yeah. out to Killer Mike. Yeah, I um, my guy. shot a video with him at that shop in Corey Moe, the barbershop back in the day. Yeah. Now, your sound has been labeled, uh, not been labeled, but your sound is sort of the blueprint for what became what people recognize as trap music. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm not talking about T.I. trap music. Mm-hmm. What I'm date was about, that? Because <laughs> T.I. <laughs> gave us the exact date yeah, yeah. of when trap music it was the date that that trap music album dropped. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, with Gucci, um, and particularly so icy, mm-hmm. um, which that record, that record also feels like the Bay that's a little bay. bit. Now that I, I was, think about I was it. coming fresh from that's the Bay. That's a Bay area. That's a Bay area yeah, side. Yeah. Um, but OJ the Juice Man, mm-hmm. at once said, uh, talking about how trap music proliferated. Mm-hmm. Uh, you cannot even trap before you say you're a trap artist. Mm-hmm. A lot of artists. What do you feel about artists that are making that sound, but maybe didn't live that lifestyle? Mm. It's nowadays it. You know, anything goes now. It's mm-hmm. like, it's just, it's, I guess it's glorified and people, know, you know, talk about it because everybody now, every rapper that come out now is trapping. They've been trapping mm-hmm. and this Maybe and that. Tra- but it's like, you know, they ain't been trapping. <laughs> right, you know? right. But they put trap in front of everything. They put like trap, trap kitchen. It's everything. Trap it's trap everything. You got trap right. nails. Yeah. And it's, it, it's, it became where, you know, you can get away with it mm-hmm. now. Back then it was real street hustlers that was, Trapping and, and you know and that's how they something. made yeah, yeah it meant something so now mm-hmm. it's just like you can say it and it sound cool to the kids and it's like okay we we roll with it. It remind me of the era of when um when Crip Walking blew up yeah uh-huh. like it started same with thing. Just, yeah exactly. gangsters doing it yeah and then you had like little kids, kids doing, doing it, it. Yes, you know, at the exactly barbecue. exactly yeah. what it is. exactly what it is yeah you know? um mm. I gotta thank you mm. for the record that we did 
with Gucci. Man, you and Gucci, yeah. Poltergeist. Yes, sir. Um, I ran. I met Gucci at the uh, Hot 97 Summer Jam. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I was a fan of Gucci, but I, you know, uh, many times in my career, I meet people that I'm a fan of. And because of my own biases, I just assume they're not a fan of me. Mm-hmm. And um, Gucci was one of them people. When I met him, I'm like, Gucci, I like what you're doing. His first thing out of his mouth was, we got to do a song again. That's it. You know, when they talk about Gucci, his work ethic, mm-hmm. I could see that. Because as soon as we met, shook hands, he was like, what's up with this record? Mm-hmm. And um, he was so popping at that time, he had to send me the record with all types of encryptions. And mm-hmm. like the records was yeah. getting, y'all records was getting stolen oh, off yeah, the internet. Yeah, definitely. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And um, recorded the song and... um. The verse I got on Poltergeist is one of my favorite verses I ever did mm. because what I'm talking about on that song is I knew that my fans, a large, not, not a large, but a significant portion of my fans was going to mm. hate on that record. Mm-hmm. And they'd be like, why are you? Because Gucci is a polarizing artist. Yeah. He's an artist that either you love him or you hate him. Mm-hmm. And he represents a sound and a style that if you don't fuck with trap music or you don't fuck with certain type of shit, Gucci represents symbolic that, of that. Yeah, so yeah. you put all, all that you don't like on, on an artist like him. him. Mm-hmm. And fans of mine be hip hop purists yeah. sometimes. And I knew the backlash was coming. So my verse I'm proud of this verse because it really <laughs> did address the backlash yeah, yeah. before it came. So when people st- people was writing whole think pieces about how I was decimating the culture when I did that song with y'all. Yeah, and I was able to be like, this verse is about you. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I knew you was I knew you was gonna what you was gonna say your think piece before you before wrote you it. Said it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Um and so you know, shout out to you and Gucci for pulling me out my comfort zone. Man, you made us you blew us up. What you mean? Oh man, it's a mutual thing, yeah. man. Like y'all, you know. Y'all recognize, it's, it's, it's game recognized game. Y'all recognize what I could bring to the table. Yeah. And y'all, man, the, y'all gave me a lot at that time of my career yeah. because I established myself as a lyricist and I had a couple hits and yeah. I, I, I'm a road warrior yeah. and everybody knows that I'm a conscious artist and all mm-hmm. that. But the fact that what y'all was doing was so official in the streets mm-hmm. that for y'all to reach out to me is like, it shows everybody that what we do on the music and beyond the music on, on this like, black cultural mm-hmm. shit like mm-hmm. is deeper than what these fans yes, think sir. it is yes yeah. sir you know it yes, correlates sir. together because mm-hmm. it's like it's crazy because if you really sit and listen to street peer people having conversation they're talking about the things that you talk about mm-hmm. in your songs mm-hmm. so when you merge it together with mm-hmm. an artist that they're going to listen to anyway then you're just reaching out to more people exactly what it yeah. is yeah. yeah um how'd you meet gucci uh i was at the barber college okay. like i was going to get my license and i'm a new kid and in Atlanta, like, you know, I got a studio in my mama's basement. Mm-hmm. So everybody from the hair school is like, oh man, let's after after school, let's go to my house. Let's go make some music. Mm-hmm. And I was making music just to make music. Like I, I, you know, it was fun to us. That's like a hobby. I want to make music so mm-hmm. I can put it on CD. We can ride around and listen to it. Mm-hmm. And um uh a guy by the name of Dre Malik, he was there at the school with me, but he was friends with Gucci. Mm-hmm. And he brought Gucci over, but Gucci wasn't Gucci then. It was right. just, you know, uh, another guy that's coming over trying to, he brought his nephew over to, to mm-hmm. want to do some mm-hmm. music. And it turned from him writing songs for, Gucci writing songs for his nephew to, I'm like, dang, he just, he got a, something about him, mm-hmm. you know. So anytime he'll go in there and demo the song for his nephew, I just was telling Gucci, like, man, won't you do it? Like, you rap, you sound right. good. Right. And it just turned from. You saw the vision. Yeah. It just, it, I just like how he, mm-hmm. he was rapping like ABC. Mm-hmm. But it was just, he was saying all the right things to me. Right. And it was just like, it went from that. He was crazy about my music. I was crazy about how he was recording. Then it, he'd call me every day, seven mm-hmm. in the morning. Say, like, you, you up? Let's do some music. Mm-hmm. And it just went from us doing that every day to going to the club, performing a song. Oh, let's mm-hmm. press up a CD. Let's give it out. And, you know, before you know it, we had a song on the radio. And then everything else was history. Cats who was around y'all at that time and around Gucci at that time describe his work ethic like Tupac-like. Yep. You agree with that? Exactly like that. Because me and him work alike. Mm-hmm. We create songs in 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. I make the beat five, 10 minutes. He going to f- either freestyle or write the song, and then we on to the next. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And that's how we do. That's that's how I am today. Mm-hmm. Like, when I work with any artist, I'm like I'm, I'm almost like, okay, let's create a whole album this week because mm-hmm. I'm ready to work. You know, we got right. work ethic, so. If you go on YouTube and you go down a Gucci Man rabbit hole, mm-hmm. you see videos saying that Gucci Man is a clone mm-hmm. now because <laughs> he just worked. I tell you, yeah, my cousin has a theory that uh, this new Gucci Man is not <laughs> the same. Right. Ever since he came out, they're like, "Oh, that's a new Gucci." Because mm-hmm. he's grown so much. We've yeah. seen his evolution as yeah. an artist and as a man. Mm-hmm. Um, you've seen it firsthand. Mm-hmm. Where do you think that drive comes from for him to have evolved? Like he he went through a lot of trials and tribu- tribulations, and he seems like he came out better for it on the other side. Gucci always been, 
you know, underneath, he's been the guy that he is right now. Mm -hmm. You know, Gucci always been that type of person. He was super smart in school. Mm -hmm. He's super, very intelligent. You mm -hmm. know, he ain't no dummy Gotta by be. far. He's mm -hmm. super intelligent. Mm -hmm. So, you know, once I guess that time of him going away, he really, you know, sat down and thought about some things. And we getting older. You yeah. know, we getting older. So he really thought about it. And Gucci know for a fact, okay, if he went away for you know, three years, mm -hmm. three, four years, he can't come back the same person he was. Mm -hmm. That don't make sense. You're right. You know what I mean? Evolve. That don't make sense. You're right. Yeah, so, and he's smart enough to know that. Like, when I come back, I'm going to be a brand new person because he know that's what's going to make him relevant too. Mm-hmm. That's Somebody, the story. That's the story. Yeah. He got the biggest comeback story in history. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah, what do you think it's so appealing about the sound that you and him created together. I have no, I really think, because <laughs> we was doing it, we were just making music just mm -hmm. that for us to love in the hood club. There's a club called Mo, uh, the Libra on Moreland Avenue. Hey, Libras. <laughs> yeah. And she it's thinks like, she missed Cleo. That's <laughs> <laughs> we were making music just to sound good in that club. Right. That's all we cared about. Oh, if wow. we going in and kill that's the club, story too. that's it. That's yeah. the music we care about. Mm -hmm. So all of our music is was unpolished. It was never just thought out. We were just creating, you know, just being spontaneous. Mm -hmm. All my beats was made in five, ten minutes because Gucci ready to rap. Right. So hurry up and make the beat, man. I want to do a song. All right. right. Now we're we trying to get ten songs done today. Right. So, and that's just how our music was made. Mm. When I first moved to Florida, like, I didn't listen to any trap music mm. or any, like, South Southern music. And Gucci was, like, one of the first people that I really started listening to because it's, like, so icy. It's, like, how can you not vibe yeah, yeah, to yeah. it? No, I just felt like the music that we was making was unattractive mm. to people that listen to, you know, regular music. That's like, like, like you said, T.I., you know, had a date on when trap music came out. Mm. He did. I didn't even know what trap music was. Right. I'm coming from the Bay. I don't know what, I don't even know what this right. is. You know, he had a nice, good sounding, you know, quality music that's like, okay, T.I., the right. truth. That, the music that me and Gucci was making was nothing like that. Mm. It was just like some kids in the basement, they ain't got the money to go to the big studio and this mm -hmm. and that. They just creating, you know, just but free But now you created So Icy in that era though, right? Mm -hmm. And it has a bass sound and it's, you know, you got you know, mm -hmm. um, the dude Will on the hook, yep. right? Mm -hmm. And that record, it's a big record, bro. Uh -huh. And it's like, a, it's a Southern classic. It's also a lot of controversy behind mm -hmm. that record. Mm -hmm. And you're one of the rare producers who made a record that was so big that niggas started fighting over it. Yeah. 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 You know what I'm saying? It was that, yeah. <laughs> Can you right. break down some of that? Man, it was just, me and Gucci were just so into whatever we did. Gucci mm -hmm. didn't care whatever beat I made, he loved it to death. He gonna do a song to it. Mm -hmm. So when he was telling me that, okay, Young Jeezy wanna do a song with us, I didn't know who Young Jeezy was at the time. You know, I'm Young Jeezy from was the still, bank, still bubbling at that he time. He was right? bubbling, but he was the hottest thing in the street. Right, I remember, yeah, because I was on Warner Brothers that mm -hmm. at that time. And yeah. They was like Todd Moskowitz and Joey yeah, IE and them uh -huh. was running down south and come back and be like, yo, what's going on in the clubs in Atlanta mm -hmm. yeah. with this Jeezy dude? Yeah, and, he was going crazy. Yeah. I mean, you know, we, and then when he told me that, I'm like, okay, let's let's do a song. So I made, I came home from the barbershop, made the beat in five minutes. Mm -hmm. Gucci had the hook, you know, singing hook. And I'm like, cool, we'll go down there and do this. We'll meet Jeezy at the studio and record the song. Mm -hmm. Now you can tell when we, when we went down there that when we played, when I played the beat, Mm -hmm. And Gucci started singing the idea. Jeezy was like, oh, I don't really, you know, that's right. what y'all want to do. Mm -hmm. We can't do nothing else. Right. That you know wasn't I mean? really the it style. Wasn't, and I knew that, but mm -hmm. Gucci was so confident and bragging on the on me so much that it was like, okay, we got to do that. Mm -hmm. we, that's what I mean, if that's what y'all want to do, then we're going to do it. Mm -hmm. Before before the night was over, with, everybody in the studio was trying to write a verse to get on that song because mm. it just sound like, oh, they got a hit. It sound like a hit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so, and and I guess once the song became what it was, you know, even though Jeezy was the hottest thing in the world at the mm. time, so Icy was one of them songs to be like, okay, all your music is going crazy, but this right here is a hit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that's when I think, you know, the, the they started getting, getting into right. it about the song because people didn't know Gucci as much as they knew Jeezy. Right. So people feel like that's Jeezy's song. Right. And I'm and like, hold on, that's Gucci's song. They that's that's correct me if I'm wrong, but that drama is pretty much over and dead, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's over. Yeah, definitely over. That's good. I like both of them artists a lot. Man, I work with Jeezy, mm -hmm. uh, you know, on a lot of stuff here. Not you know, not long ago, okay. and I remember Gucci being like, "Say that what you did with Jeezy was hard." <laughs> <laughs> that's so, beautiful. Yeah, that's good. That's yeah, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Um, you seem to have an ear mm -hmm. for like breakout hits. Like Versace was the same type mm -hmm. of thing with mm -hmm. Migos, right? Yeah. How do you connect with them? Uh, I just, man, it was a, uh artist of mine that I used to work with 
Well, I still work with him all the time by the name of Young LA. He had the song called Ain't I featuring yeah. T.I. and Young oh, Bro. That was my shit. But this is Good like record. my artist. This is my artist right. from when he was since he was 16. Right. So and I he was just he's so dope to me that I respect his opinion when he talk about other music. And he mm-hmm. came to my house one day, like, man, say is these young guys rapping on your beat, going so crazy, talking mm-hmm. about bando, whatever. <laughs> you know, right. and coming from him, I'm like, oh, I need to go look it up. Right, right. You know, so when I go look up Migos, I see Quavo. Uh, rapping. I, the first video I seen Quavo just rapping it, you know, just a ceiling fan going. He was in the house and he was just rapping the song. Mm-hmm. Then they had a little video and I was like, man, this is so hard. Mm. So I wanted to find him. I went looking for him. They it. had a brand new style, right? They just, it was just, you know, they just, Quavo reminded me of Gucci so mm-hmm. much. And I'm like, he's just hard. He just dope to me. So, so do you feel like you, did you feel like you saw the vision with Migos immediately? Did you understand how big they were going to become? No, I didn't. I okay. never, you know, you don't never understand that. You just mm-hmm. know it's something that you like that. I know I was attracted to it. Like, hey, man, I need to find them. Mm-hmm. I showed Gucci. I, before I met them, I showed Gucci. I said, man, you got to look at these young guys right here. Mm-hmm. Gucci seen the video and like, boy, Zay, they super hard. You mm-hmm. need to find them. Mm-hmm. And it just so happened I was going out to a club with OJ the Juice Man. He had to perform. And Amigos hey. was there. <laughs> and I'm going up to, to the uh, VIP booth, Quavo coming down. Mm-hmm. He stepped on my foot. Mm-hmm. And I looked at them like, oh, snap, I've been looking for you. Right. Wow. <laughs> and they like, no, I've been looking for you. <laughs> that's like TV. That's, that's a TV. Right. It's like it's a commercial almost. Okay, so yeah. you're going to be in the Migos movie. Yeah, exactly. When they do the movie, when got they do to. the biopic. I'm going to play Zay Got to. <laughs> got to. Uh, talking about OJ the Juice Man, mm-hmm. like his sound was really different than what was coming out of Atlanta back in the 2000s. Tell me more about that. OJ the Juice Man was a guy. Now, Gucci went to jail for the murder case. Mm-hmm. So now I'm just a producer without an artist now. Mm. I'm just a you know a guy like, dang, we was making some noise. Mm-hmm. Gucci, Gucci locked up for a while. But OJ was from the same neighborhood, and he had just got out. And he had rapped on one of my beats. You know, back then, I'd give out a beat CD with 40 beats on it, just giving it to anybody around the city, just because mm-hmm. I want artists to be rapping on my beats. That sound like Jay Diller. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's like, man, I you know, take these beats and rap on them. He had a song called Everything On Me. Mm-hmm. And at that same club, the Club Libra that where me and Gucci go all the time, he had the club on fire with that song. I remember song. that record. And I'm like, yeah. oh, no, this the guy. I'm finna, that's what I need to tie in with Juice. Mm-hmm. Right. Me and Juice start working every day. If you go back in the day, Gucci first couple of mixtapes, OJ first, it, maybe if they first three, four mixtapes, I was doing every beat on every on every mix. That's how you became the architect for that sound. That's it. That's yeah. how I became that's how that sound became. Yeah. You know what I mean? So they rapping on every and they didn't pick beats. You know, we recording at my mama's house. You don't mm-hmm. get to come over here and pick no beat that you <laughs> like or you don't like. Right. You gotta rap on the beat I made. Right. You know what I mean? Burger and that's how you 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 creating like you the like you quarterbacking. I'm quarterbacking. I'm just right. making the beat. But right. I'm not I'm not knowing this is finna be the sound for the next century, mm-hmm. you know, I mm-hmm. just I just know this is what we like, this type of music we like, and we just keep making songs back to back to back. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, quick question because it's it's so interesting because you came from a church, your mom, your mm-hmm. father's a preacher, your mom is choir director, and you work with like some of the hardest, the hardest artists. Thing. Like you're saying, uh, you know, Gucci went to jail, mm-hmm. OJ just came out. Mm-hmm. Like, how did you transition to working with this dangerous crowd, called, quote unquote? I, I I I just feel like that's a position that God put me in because. Uh, I'm I'm nothing, you know, I don't do the same thing these guys do. Mm-hmm. But I'm so comfortable and I'm these are the type of people I want to be around all the time. Right. For some odd reason. And these guys brag on my lifestyle. Like Gucci the first time, every time we go to the studio and he introduced me to somebody, hey man, this is my producer Zaytoven. He don't drink, he don't smoke, he don't cook, he don't <laughs> that's that's his intro to, and that's, I'm like, dang bro, you ain't gotta do all love. that. But it's just he appreciate, he appreciate his, your influence in his life. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So you know, and that's how we got so close. Like, mm-hmm. you know, we like we go everywhere with each other. We now Gucci is a known robber. Now this is the mm-hmm. no, he gonna run up in your house. He mm-hmm. gonna take something from you. Mm-hmm. But this is the guy I'm with all the time. And I just felt like you know that's just a position that God put me in. I remember going to church, and a lady prophesying to me, uh, a lady named uh, Diane Palmer, and she was just saying that my sound is gonna be great, or you know, my sound is gonna be heard over the nations, mm-hmm. and to not be afraid of where, you know, wherever I'm going or mm-hmm. the people I'm around, the places I'm going, mm-hmm. you know, I'm covered. I'll be, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be covered. So don't even worry mm-hmm. about it. Because I've been in trap house. I've been to places that I probably shouldn't have been in. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I don't know what's going on over here. Right. I'm innocently over here about music. About music. Yeah, so. um, Atlanta, in Atlanta, mm-hmm. 
Usher has been very, very, very good about staying in touch with the times mm -hmm. and know which sounds is hot, it's particularly in the club. Mm -hmm. Usher like going to the club. Oh, oh yeah. Cool. Usher, Usher will be in the club, making love in the club, and then he'll confess, <laughs> and then he'll go back to the club and make find another girl in the club yeah, yeah, and yeah. make another few records about that girl in that club. Yeah, yeah. And um, he tapped into your sound, right? So you won a Grammy with Usher yeah. in 2011 mm -hmm. on the Raymond versus Raymond album. Yes, sir. How did that come together? Um... At the time in Atlanta, around that time, around 2010, I just remember like my sound being just dominant. Mm -hmm. If you turn on the radio, if it's the hot eight at eight, mm -hmm. six of the six or seven songs of them, it was mine. You know, mm -hmm. me producing all just the different artists around. So the uh, the writer Sean Garrett reached out to me. Shout out to Sean Garrett. Yeah, man. shout out to Sean Garrett. He <laughs> reached out to me like, hey man, I, you know. I never heard of them before, mm -hmm. and all my music come from me working at my mama basement with the artists. Mm -hmm. Like I, you know, so I don't know who all these people are. Right. I don't know who the writers are, none of that. Mm -hmm. So I went to the studio. He was like, man, I need some beats. Man, I'm working with Chris Brown. I'm working with Usher. This and that. And I'm like, okay, bro, whatever. Here, take some beats and you know, <laughs> and right. do what you do. Whatever. You know, I never thought twice about it. He wrote the song Papers, you know, for Usher, and he was telling me like, Zay, we got a hit. We got a smash mm -hmm. with Usher. And I'm like, yeah, okay. He was telling me that for three months. And I'm like, man, come on, bro. Okay, good. Okay, cool. We got to mm -hmm. hear with Usher. I didn't believe it till they, you know, it was like eight months later. He called me like, hey, man, so they want to go with the song. It's going to be his first single. And I'm like, oh, you for real? That was the sound of the street at that time. I though. know it, but yeah. I still, you know, it's Usher. I, yeah. people, girls should tell me I look like Usher back in high school. So it's like me working with Usher is like that's something. <laughs> I ain't thinking about that. That's, you know, that's on TV. Right. You know, that's, that's too far away. Right. So... The fact that they came and said, oh, this is going to be his first single, this and that, it just blew my mind. That's like, so when I, I remember they playing the first time on the radio, they kept playing it back. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, snap. I done made it. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know, this is my first time I feel like I done made it, man. Right. I, I did a song with Usher and it's on the radio. Wow. Yeah. Um, I want to run through some of the artists' relationships that you have. We talked mm -hmm. about Gucci and mm -hmm. we talked about Usher. Mm -hmm. um, Future. Mm -hmm. What's it like working with Future? Future is mind blowing. Mm -hmm. Like he's one of those artists that I go to the studio, and he make the hair on my arm stand up. Wow! Mm -hmm. Just listening to him and watching him just create, mm -hmm. it's like it's something I ain't never seen before. Mm -hmm. It's like I can give him a beat that I feel like that's not even that great of a beat, mm -hmm. and he'll get in there, man, and listen to it for ten minutes and start saying something. It's like, bro, he got to be living on another planet. Mm. <laughs> Cause future I don't know Hendrix. what's making him yeah, come. Remember up when Future with. first came out, he had the astronaut suit on. Man, you know what's so crazy <laughs> now? Listen, uh -huh. what's so crazy is Future used to come to my house. Mm -hmm. Rocco would bring him over, and I would take Future verse off some of the songs because uh -huh. I didn't like. I was like, oh, that just right. You Rocco was, was so hard to me. It's like wow. uh, I don't like his verse on there. Mm -hmm. Man, when Future caught that vein, uh, which is I think it was Dirty Sprite. Even though I was on every mixtape from mm -hmm. Future's first mixtape. You know, I was on it. I was on his friend. It was a uh, one thousand mm -hmm. man when Dirty Sprite came out. It's like Future just was like Shh. that changed the game right there. But right now there. I'm talking about now. Right. Forget back then. Right. right now, I sit in the studio of Future and it just blow. It blows my mind. I also want to know about working with Lecrae because mm -hmm. Lecrae been in this business for a long time. Mm -hmm. He put in his work as a as an artist in the industry before he even had a hit record. Mm -hmm. And I used to see him on the road. And I'm not a Christian at all. Mm -hmm. I think being a Christian rapper mm. is very hard to do mm -hmm. because there's a lot about rap that just don't like a lot about what a lot of rappers do that just don't fit within the values of, of, mm -hmm. of, of, of traditional Christianity. If you're mm -hmm. trying to, if you're trying to speak the word, mm -hmm. like how Lecrae do it, mm -hmm. it's hard to do. Mm -hmm. That boy got lyrics. He do. Like he got flow. Mm -hmm. He get on stage and rap with the best of them. Yeah. And he does not compromise. I've never, I, I've never seen an artist rap about Jesus mm -hmm. and be dope. Mm. in the way that Lecrae has done it. Mm -hmm. Not before him, not after him. Mm -hmm. No one has done it since. Mm -hmm. And then even like, he had, I don't I don't know the names of his hit records, but he had a couple hits before he got to work with uh -huh. you, right? Mm -hmm. But even, even that, like he didn't rest on his laurels. Mm -hmm. Like he, when I hear the music y'all do together, mm -hmm. there's no compromise. There's no compromise from you. Mm -hmm. There's no compromise from him. You know, people, people always talk about religious trap music. Mm -hmm. But I think he's he's come the closest to doing. Yeah, it. yeah. You know, uh, I was I'm almost like you. I almost felt like I, I'm a 
I'm a church guy and mm-hmm. I listen to gospel music. That's mm-hmm. my man, I listen to gospel music more than I listen to anything else. Mm-hmm. So I don't want to hear no rap gospel music. Mm-hmm. I always felt like that. It's like, man, it's gonna be that's corny. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So when you like you say, when you meet a guy like Lecrae that can really nail it mm-hmm. and not make it corny and and still be, you know, dope and flowing, mm-hmm. can really rap and really put, you know, songs together, it was just like the perfect match. Now I never thought about doing, you know, a gospel rap album. I wanted mm-hmm. to do gospel music, but I, you know, I wanted to do, you know, churchy music, yeah, like yeah. gospel music. You know what I mean? But I always feel like, you know, God, you know, put things on my path. He always sets me up to do something that you that I didn't know I was gonna do. Mm-hmm. That's what keep me excited about doing music all the time because I don't know what's next. I don't know what I'm finna do next. Right. You know what I mean? So it keeps me. It, 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 it you know fuels my fire of just even just being creative. Right. So like me and Lecrae working on part two right now. Oh man, I love yeah. that first man. Uh, so it, it blew my mind. It's like I'm working with Lecrae. I didn't know that. I didn't know too much about Lecrae. I mm-hmm. knew he was a big gospel rap artist. Mm-hmm. I wasn't into. I don't listen to yeah. gospel rap music. Most of us don't. <laughs> You know, Le, to, yeah, Lecrae yeah. is Lecrae is dope enough to where it's like, it don't matter. It don't whether, matter. Yeah. That's exactly what it was. Yeah. So it's like, okay, now I can listen to this and don't feel a certain way about yeah. it. Yeah. yeah so. Um, what is it about my generation or people who like purest hip hop mm-hmm. that they don't like or don't get? What is it that they don't get about Lil Uzi Vert as an artist that they should respect and appreciate? Mm-hmm. And I ask that because, like Gucci, he's polarizing, mm-hmm. but for different reasons. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I just I I have to say it's it's so new. It's just mm-hmm. so new. I had to. I'm almost I'm almost in that same phase. Mm-hmm. I had to kind of learn to respect, you know, the generation that come after me, because mm-hmm. I felt like the what what we doing it meant so much, mm-hmm. or it it cost us more. Like right. I'm a producer. I was just talking about this on a panel yesterday. I'm a producer that in my studio I got drum machines, I got keyboards, I got sound modules. Mm-hmm. I do all this to create music. When another producer can bring a laptop with nothing, no keyboard mm-hmm. or nothing, and just start clicking buttons mm-hmm. and make a beat. And it's almost like you almost want to downplay what he's doing because, mm-hmm. like, bro, anybody can do that. Right. Like, you cheating. But you know? at the same time. <laughs> but at the same time. Anybody can do that. Yeah. So yeah. it's like it's 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 you have to respect that. You got to respect it. Yeah. And it's working. Right. So when you got guys like Lil Uzi Vert or all the young guys, because, like my son, the one turned me on to all the young guys. Mm-hmm. Like he don't keep son me. Now? He's thirteen. Okay, so he so want right, to tell me right, who you supposed to work with. He know the hot yeah. shit. He yeah. know like, right. okay, daddy, that's cool you doing, but you need to work with this person. Yeah. And when I listen to the person, it's like, man, that's who you like. That's what you like. Right. But then I have to really sit down and listen to these people. And then when I go work with mm-hmm. them, I find a whole new respect for them. Right. When I went and worked with Lil Uzi, I'm like, oh, I see. This he's amazing. The right. guy's amazing. You know what I mean? Right. So you can't... You I asked that because I had the same experience, of course, mm-hmm. like just from the place in hip hop I come from. Mm-hmm. When Little Uzi, Uzi, Uzi Vert first came out, mm-hmm. I ain't get it. Yeah. But then when I seen the work he was seen doing work, over, over a certain amount of songs, I was like, okay, I get it. But I can see how people who fuck with me still don't get, don't, it. They don't get it. Yeah. It's funny because... Uh, Instagram and social media has kind of changed everybody's profession down to like yoga teachers or even mm-hmm. like uh, self-help coaches or whatever. Mm-hmm. And like now you can get beats like on YouTube yep. or Instagram or anything like that. Do you how do you feel about that shift? I mean, I I think they have made the game where it can, you know, it can definitely be watered down because. Now you know you can mm-hmm. you can put you can get your beats on YouTube. You don't gotta go see a. a I could go get the Zaytoven. Zaytoven, type Zaytoven beats. Be, yeah. Mm-hmm. You don't gotta go see Zaytoven no more. Right. You can go on there and get the Zaytoven type beat, and it's gonna sound pretty much just the same. Almost. That's how same. you know you made it though, right? Yeah. When you get the Zaytoven type beats. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> but you rather get sell your <laughs> own yeah, beats. Yeah, <laughs> I'd rather sell my own beats, but you know that's I mean that's just the way of the game now. So it's it's like. I mean, all the way down to the clothing industry. You know, if something is working, people are gonna make the copy. They're gonna copy it and then add something different. Right. And then it's like, so the creativity is getting drained. I feel like creativity is getting drained, you know, out of the music industry because mm-hmm. of technology. Mm-hmm. But that's just how that's that's the way the game go. It's mm. funny because like with food, because I'm I'm a chef, whatever. So mm. like you have Heinz ketchup, and they have Heinz ketchup. That's the big name brand. But then they also have like generic ketchups that are still made from Heinz but just uses a little bit cheaper ingredients Mm -hmm. and so I wonder it's like that's ever something like rappers or producers do want to do like you know you have your main Tyler brand or your main Zaytoven brand Mm -hmm. but then you like throw out beats that are cheaper on YouTube so that you can still compete that's like With MF that. Doom when he'd be sending out the imposter MF Doom. Yeah. So <laughs> he was like, I'm going to still get the bag, but they didn't give me enough money. So I'm going to send out the, yeah. the dude in the mask. Yeah, but you don't have your name under it, oh, but yeah. it's still like, you still know. the same thing. 
I never thought about doing nothing like that. I'm just a guy that's, you know, mm -hmm. I want to keep my name and my brand just, you know, if it's Heinz, it's Heinz. I ain't, I ain't do nothing right, cheap. You're not trying to cut yeah. it. <laughs> not trying to cook it, cut it, or nothing none, none like that. that. Yeah. None of that diluted water nah, down. Nah. Um, I've heard you say often, and we spoke upstairs about this a little bit, mm -hmm. about staying relevant and creating a lot of content because people's attention spans is, is, is less now. Mm -hmm. And just sort of serve being in service to the people, right? Mm -hmm. The people want the, the pr product you learn from Gucci. Mm -hmm. Like, that's what they want. Mm -hmm. It's like a hustler mentality. Yeah. It's like, that's what we're going to create. But what about the concept of decreasing supply to create more demand? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I talked to you upstairs about, like, people like Dave Chappelle and Most Def, mm -hmm. people who are my... Uh, peers that I hang out with, but I'm on social media a lot. I'm doing a lot of songs, a lot of things. These guys pull back so that when when you do see them, it's a lot more exciting. Uh, we agreed that those are two different strategies. Yeah. Um, but how do you how do you find that balance of overexposing yourself? So, uh, you just gotta know. I have to feel like you gotta know your demographics and know know your audience. Mm -hmm. Like guys like that, they know they can pull back for two years and then come back and everybody gonna be crazy about it. Mm -hmm. Me, mm -hmm. I can pull back for two years and then you won't ever hear me again. I can right. try to come back. It's right. like man, that time, your time over with. You know. So it's all about knowing your you know your your demographics. Gucci understand that. Me and Gucci got the same demographic. We understand that. Mm -hmm. What's gonna keep people interested in us is us keep feeding the people. Mm -hmm. If you stop feeding the people, we fit, they feel like, oh, you fell off, or you mm -hmm. ain't got nothing else. So, you know, I, I just it's just figuring out who your audience is. I feel like sometimes if you go on a week, they feel like, oh, yeah, you go on for a week. It's like, oh, he quit, he stopped. Yeah, yeah. they they, don't, they pay attention to what's popping on the blog right now, right now. second, right and now. then something else distracted. Then you yeah. go to your Facebook, something else. Then you go to Instagram, yeah, something, else. something else. And you know, there's a lot of content, but that's a that's a good problem to have. You have yeah. too much content to sift through. Yeah, like we complain about a lot, even in the streaming era. Like you know, back in the day. I used to have to get on a bus and go down and buy a white label. And, mm -hmm. you know, the idea that I could pull music out the air and the stream and everything is good. It's convenient. It's convenient. Um, but what you what you gain in convenience, mm -hmm. you lose in sound quality. And creativity. You and, and, and you can lose in creativity, mm -hmm. I agree. But I think uh, for producers in particular, you're losing credit. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when I first started with high tech, high tech taught me how to find the vibe. Cause I was more like, where's the beats at? Let's go. I was like, Gucci, yeah. where the beats at? Our tech would be like, slow down. Mm -hmm. Let's create a vibe in the studio. So I appreciate mm -hmm. learning that from him. But it was very important for me in that era to be like, high tech did the beats. Mm -hmm. It's when you saw the album, it said quality and high tech. And then mm -hmm. you could buy the vinyl, you see high tech mm -hmm. and you see him in the video. And then after that, there was the era of like the Neptunes and, and, and certain and track masters and certain people had certain locks or certain sounds where mm -hmm. it's like, you knew you didn't even have to, you know, Dr. Dre in particular, mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. didn't matter who got on the beat. You know, like yeah. you, if it was a Dr. Dre production, you knew you was getting some shit. Mm -hmm. yeah. But now in streaming, like if I go to if I go to a Gucci Man page, mm -hmm. and, unless Gucci saying Zaytoven on the track, which mm -hmm. he does a lot, mm -hmm. if I go to listen to Gucci Man Spotify, mm -hmm. I might listen to a bunch of songs and not know or care who did the beat. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that, and what do you think we can do to remedy that? Well, nowadays producer has tags you know that's how mm -hmm. you kind of identify mm -hmm. who made the beat mm -hmm. i started doing tags years and years ago mm -hmm. just because people would make beats that sound like mine they'll sell beats that sound like mine and they say that's a zaytoven beat and it's like i didn't make that beat right so i had to you know i started making the tag so people know no nah, that's zaytoven beat right mm -hmm. there because the name is on it so um i mean i think that's that's the best remedy for producers now is having a tag so if the if the artist don't say your name on it your tag is on it, so, you know. Right. Have you had problems with people trying to uh, to sell beats and say they're like yours? Because there's a rapper in Atlanta, and uh, I can't remember what his name was, but his manager had to, like, go in because they were, like, people were selling uh tracks or whatever and it's saying that they were them mm -hmm. just because of social media and you can just email over a track and you don't know do you have you ever had any problems with that i had so many problems i had people that then i mean on the streets then bought beats mm -hmm. that supposed to have been zaytoven beats mm -hmm. and they not my beats it's somebody that made some beats that sound like me and took the tag from somewhere and put it on the beat wow. <laughs> and they'll come to me like well zay we just wanted you know wanted you to do a drop or something man because we bought right. these beats and I listened to it like, I didn't do that. I, didn't I don't know where beat. you got that from. It's like so, bootlegs on the yeah. corner. <laughs> so, you know, it's a lot of that going on, too. Wow. Herbie Lovebug, um, who 
put out, produced for Salt and Pepper and Kenny Play and all them. Mm-hmm. Put out them groups back in the days, Chub Rock and all that. He tells a story about going to the club. Salt and Pepper was supposed to perform at. He's like, nah, they at the crib. Mm-hmm. And he went to the club and it was Salt and Pepper. It wasn't Salt and Pepper on stage. It was <laughs> wow. two, two other people <laughs> dressed as Salt and Pepper. The other shakers. Said, <laughs> right. You know, it was uh, Rosemary and Time. <laughs> <laughs> and he said that... Um, he got kicked out the club trying to tell the promoter mm-hmm. that that's not really Salt and Pepper. So that's been happening in the game. And they say Salt and Pepper crazy. songs. Yeah, they were doing push it back Shut in the days. Up. There was no back in the days. You there was no you know internet. The internet, yes. Like push it on the radio. You could you look. Know. That happened to Missy. Yeah. There was a dude that Shut. went to jail because he was impersonating Missy getting checks. Wow. A dude with finger waves. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> He was slick. Thing. That's slick right there. Um, tell us what's in the future for Zaytoven besides you and me doing some work together. Nah, me and you definitely got to yeah. do our project. Man, put me on uh, a track. I'm trying come to on, rap let's too. Go. Rap, do an intro. Yeah, Sing man. Yeah, let's come go. On, do it. I mean, I'm into you know I, what whatever God has for me next, man. I'm always you know game to do it. Like mm-hmm. I just did a BET show. It was called the Next Big Thing. I never thought about being on TV every week. Mm-hmm. I just did a show uh, called Next Big Thing. Uh, I do movies. I'm working on this uh, comedy movie right now uh, called Finesse 2. My guy Al Nuke, you know, he direct and and write movies, Mm -hmm. you know. So he got me acting in movies. So, Mm. you know, I'm all this stuff, I'm enjoying myself. I'm really enjoying the ride. Mm. Like, I enjoy making movies. Ain't that the point? That's the point. Yeah. And, you know, so, like, if me and you do a project together, Mm -hmm. I'm going to enjoy getting in the studio and us just coming up with whatever we come up with. Right. That's the, the next bit. That's the next thing for me. Right. You know, so that's what I'm on, man. Right. Uh, tell me more about this trap r- round table that you're doing. So I think it's me, Shawty Red and DJ Toon. It just I guess it's a round table discussion about, you know, I guess they, they calling us pioneers of, of the, you know, the trap sound or the, mm-hmm. the music. I know DJ Toon was is T.I.'s producer. Mm-hmm. Shawty Red was Jeezy producer. And then I'm Gucci Man producer. Mm-hmm. Oh, so, wow. you know, that's all the three guys mm-hmm. out of Atlanta. Like, OG know. Tag Masters. Yeah, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm excited, excited that we have round tables that are around hip hop and are they're around black people and politics as you've had like recently the Revolt Summit. Yeah. Obama had his mm-hmm. own um, summit. We have a trap round table. It's like so many different layers mm-hmm. and uh, outlets for information for young black people. It's, yeah. it's really amazing. Speaking of that, um, do you see yourself in the future ever sort of providing that type of space or platform for younger producers? Yes, definitely. Mm-hmm. I definitely want to be in that space. Matter of fact, what I want to do uh, next year, I was, I was, I'm trying to create a a, a school almost, mm-hmm. a Zaytoven, you know, curriculum where you can come in and learn how to get in the game the way I did. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I, I went to some building. It was out here in L.A. and they had the. Um, they had a, a live music room. They had a classroom. They got studios. Mm-hmm. And I vision that same thing for me. Because mm-hmm. I do something that's called producers camp where mm-hmm. I have wow. students, I have guys that want to produce come in and I just show them. I give them the game. I show them how I create, you know, how what they should be doing mm-hmm. to try to make it in, make it in the game. How can producers get in touch with you for that? Oh, uh, it's all on my IG. Okay. Like my next date might be in January and I let them know it might be in LA. And it what's your be, IG? Uh, Zaytoven Beats, Z A Y T O V E N B E A T Z. Mm-hmm. Yep. So yeah, check me out, man. That's I always amazing. do classes. I probably do them like three times a year. Okay. Mm-hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, a wonderful producer, a gentleman, and a scholar. Give it up for Zaytoven. All the people for Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Zay. Thank that you, was Robert. awesome. That's what's up. When you're ready. I'm ready now. I'll come to, I'll fly to Atlanta.